Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to go over some bookish memes that I found across the interwebs. Roll the intro music. <laughs> Read r slash books. Read. Books and cinema are vastly different mediums, so a one-on-one -on -one adaptation of the novel is impossible and your expectations otherwise are unreasonable. Screaming, no! Oh, I feel that one. I think in my in my older, uh, as, I, as I get older, I'm, I'm less, I care less about it being a one-on-one -on -one adaptation because it, they are two very separate mediums and you got to look at them differently. Um, there are good decisions that are made and there are poor decisions that are made. Some really good adaptations being, I think, both iterations of It. Um, we just had the Shadow and Bone series adaptation, which was pretty good. Um, Lord of the Rings did a pretty great job, but yeah, we've had some piss poor adaptations too, so... But they are two different mediums, so I, I do agree with this meme. <laughs> this one was labeled un, uh, under Station Eleven. <laughs> I mean, in a post-apocalyptic world, how would society even use you? Traveling bard. <laughs> if you've read Station Eleven, you, you kind of know, you get it. Um, it's, it's a pretty good book. A lot of people really rave about it. I think it's more in the... It's all right. Pretty good station. I like Emily St. John Mandel's writing, but um, the issue I had was when it swapped back and forth between perspectives, I felt we spent more time, for me, we spent more time with characters that I didn't care about as much as other ones. So it was very uneven with how much time we spent with what characters to me. But this is, this is funny. Traveling bard. Duh. Me getting into sci-fi four years ago because, wow, cool, spaceships and planets. Me now, reading and enjoying stories about castrated space barons piloting spaceships with their groin and transhumanist utopian space empire waging war inside virtually simulated hells. <laughs> I'd say that's true about fantasy, too. We were seeing the surgeons of me getting into fantasy. Me getting into fantasy because of the smut. <laughs> I think it's funny. Lord of the Rings taking in all the praise for best book to film adaptation. Jurassic Park. I agree with this. Jurassic Park is one of the best movies ever. A great book. I still yet to read the second one though, but love the book. Love that movie so much. I have uh, uh, this lifelong love of dinosaurs because of this movie and I just, it's great. That's, that's funny though. <laughs> My feelings about a narrator five minutes into the audiobook. Ugh. My feelings about the same narrator after 30 minutes. Ayo. I've done this. I've done this. I've I've heard a narrator and be like, ugh, and then they just got to grow on you. But I've also had it happen the other way where I'm like, all right, I like this person. And then something about it, it just, they irritate me. And I've had audiobook narrators that I just don't understand how they got that job in any way, shape, or form. So it all varies. Eight-year-old me who has already read five books in 24 hours. 18-year-old me struggling to finish one book before buying new ones. George R. R. Martin, Robert Jordan, Clash of the Titans, J.R.R. Tolkien. Ha! <laughs> the Mac Daddy of them all. What if we're all characters in a book? What if when you forget what you're going to say? I haven't read through this whole one yet, so forgive me. <clears throat> what if we're all characters in a book? What if when you forget what you were going to say, it's the author backspacing? Guys, why isn't everyone reblogging this? It's a scientific breakthrough. And when you've had a sense that you've been through a certain day or moment before, it's because the author is rewriting the same part of the story, just with better context. <gasps> <sighs> That's a fun theory. I like that. <laughs> when someone assumes that when you are reading a book that you are doing nothing and therefore can be interrupted repeatedly. No. I I uh, used to work at this 
big spaceship looking corporate building, went out, sat down, had headphones in, listened to, listening to like some uh, just instrumental music. That helps me focus when I read, um, especially in a hustle bustle area. And I'm reading. I have headphones in and this woman is just lingering by my table. And I'm like, ignore, ignore, ignore. And she just keeps lingering. There's plenty of other people around. Why are you bothering me? And then I, I look up. And then she starts, proceeds to start talking to me and then wants me to do this like survey thing. I'm like, I'm, leave me alone. <laughs> Dante stands in the middle of the bridge over the fourth Borgia. Borgia. I don't remember how to say these words at all. I read this book years and years and years ago and looks down at the souls of the fortune tellers and diviners. Here are the souls of all those who attempted by forbidden arts to look into the future. Among these damned are Amphirius, Teresias, Aruns, Manto, Eurpulius, Michael Scott, Guido Benati, and Estante. <laughs> Michael Scott, no! No, not the A player, no. <gasps> That's funny. No, Michael. Please, Victor, I'm begging you just to advance the plot. Okay. Now for the next chapter, I shall give you the full history of the Parisian sewer system. Oh, I've never read Les Mis. It's one of the books that kind of intimidates me. I might do it on audio. I think that would probably be better for me. But <laughs> please, just, just, just advance the plot. No, no, no. We got to talk about the sewer system. And I couldn't do this video without, a, without one, uh, at least one writing me. And I've seen this, this like new meme format everywhere. I think it's funny. I'm going to write a book and complete it, right? And complete it, right? <laughs> I feel this one in my bones. It hurts. <laughs> All right. Last one for today. I thought this was a good one to end on. Please shut this door completely. Or cold air, water, strangers, robbers, orcs, Nazgul, Death Eaters, Voldemort, Sauron, Fire Nation troops, Daleks, Cybermen, cats, dogs, etc., etc., will be able to enter. Thanks, library staff. <laughs> oh, nothing beats a good librarian. All right, so that is it today. A bunch of memes that made me giggle. Um, I've seen... I, I tried to pick ones that I haven't seen very often or at all around the around the internet, so I hope a lot of these were new for you. Tell me which one was your favorite of these. I think my favorite was probably Michael Scott or the Jurassic Park one. Yeah, those are funny. Okay, anyway, until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye.